The Wahoo Element Roam is Wahoo's latest flagship cycling computer. And today I'm gonna to run you through my thoughts on this computer, having spent a couple of months testing it. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. It's got a good feel to it, this box, and it's got some good top quality graphic design on it as well. I'm a big fan. So jumping straight in, we have the device itself. This is the Wahoo Element Roam. You can tell it's very familiar in its design to the rest of Wahoo's products, as is the out front mount, which retains that slight aerodynamic shape that the Wahoo Element bolts mount and computer interface had as well. And we'll come on to that a little bit more in a bit. You also get a cable with which you charge the device and you can pass data between it and your laptop and you get stem mounts and additional rubber bungs, as well as cable ties with which to attach it to your bike. This being Wahoo's latest flagship device, it does come with a price tag to match. And at 299 pounds, it is an expensive cycling computer. And it is up there with the rest of them, such as Garmin's 830 device, which costs 350 pounds, or their 530 device, which costs around 300 pounds as well. And for that money, you get much of the same functionality that you would expect with any other top-end flagship computer, including similar features, whether that's sensor pairing or navigational turn-by-turn -turn directions. And we'll get into all of these a bit later on and how well the Wahoo Roam does them. But before we do, we'll touch on the device's weight. So I've got some scales here. And the device itself weighs 95 grams. And if we pair it with its out front mount, it weighs 140 grams. So moving on to the device's setup process, this is really truly where all of Wahoo's devices shine through compared to the rest of the market because the setup process for the Element Roam, just like the Element and just like the Element Bolt, is all done through your smartphone and through the Wahoo Element app. It really is a joy to use and using the app makes it a very seamless process and it's much faster to set up a Wahoo device than it is to set up a Garmin device. So all you do is you pair it to your mobile phone, you scan the QR code that comes up on the screen of the computer when you select pair your phone and then you're free to set it up how you want it to look. Now it uses data screens a little differently to how Garmin uses data screens. The maximum that you can get on the Wahoo is 11 data screens, which is a lot when you actually look at them. There's not really much where you could discern that amount of information. And then rather than pressing them like you would on the Garmin Edge 830 and changing them like that, it's really simple to do. You just get out your smartphone and you can change them using the smartphone screen and it changes it instantaneously. So you can do it on the side of the road and it changes in real time. The other thing that Wahoo does that is different to Garmin, whereas Garmin has different sizes of data field that you can use, Wahoo's are all the same, but uses the zoom buttons on the right hand side to jump between them. They call it their super zoom feature. So you could be riding along with 11 fields in front of you and then one click up takes that down to sort of nine or 10 and then it keeps doing that all the way through and they get bigger each time until you have just the one. Pairing sensors to the device is also all done through the smartphone rather than doing it through the computer. And once you've put it on your smartphone, it then sends all of that information across to this device which is then paired to it. So if you want to pair to power, speed, cadence, heart rate, and all of those sort of sensors you would usually use, you pair them all to your smartphone and then they're beamed across and the device can look at them as well. So as I said at the start, it does have a very familiar shape and design. And if I get the out front mount out, you can see that it looks a lot like the Wahoo Element Bolt, but it's bigger. So it shares the same device size as the Element, but retains that sort of hallmark of Wahoo aerodynamics. Now, Wahoo have said that aerodynamics wasn't the only reason they designed the computer to be like this. So it's not as fast as the Wahoo Bolt through the air, but it is done to make it look nice and to keep a very similar aesthetic across the family of devices, which it does very well. So Wahoo is yet to jump to a touchscreen in the same way that Garmin have, preferring to stick with buttons. So there are the two super zoom buttons on the side. 
there's three bumper buttons across the bottom and there is one on button or menu button on that side, on the left hand side. Unlike Garmin devices, what I do like about these buttons is that they are on the top of the bumper so they're not difficult to reach, they're not too close to the handlebars, they're very easy to press on the tops. What I don't like about these buttons is that unless you press them right in the very deepest part of the button dip, they're very difficult to actuate an actual change and they aren't very receptive or sensitive. So if you're wearing fit gloves or if you're riding along, you often find that you have to press them multiple times to actually get them to do anything, which is a real downside if you're riding along because you don't want to be staring at your computer for too long. Wahoo has retained its LEDs at the side and across the top and you can change these LEDs to represent whatever you would like, whether that's your speed or your average speed, so they would flash red if you drop below it and green if you went above it, to your power, cadence, heart rate, whatever you would like to, to train by. You can also set them so that if you want to turn, it will flash up at the top and tell you about an upcoming turn or navigational change that you need to be aware of. So one of the big changes for the Roam over the Bolt and the Element is the integration of colour into the screen. Um, and they use it in quite limited way, and no, it's not all colourful, only certain types of road are given a different colour to show them as sort of an A road or a state road compared to the rest of the roads around them. They use it to show what bodies of water or rivers that you might be near come up as blue as you would expect. And they'll also show you their chevrons. So um, if you're off course and it's routing you back to your course, that will come up as a certain color of chevron. And if you need to make a change, that will also look different as well. Now that display is 2.7 inches in its size. It doesn't look particularly big because of that large amount of bezel around the outside of it, which of course does house the LEDs, but potentially doesn't look as sleek as other cycling computers on the market, especially Garmin's, which are now in a place where they look pretty smart all the time, especially when they're on the front of a bike. One thing that Wahoo have integrated into the Roam is an ambient light sensor, so the device does get brighter or dimmer depending on your surrounding light, um, which can make it easier to read if you're riding when it's getting dusky or you go through a tunnel. It's just a nice little touch that makes the screen that bit more usable. For the update with the Wahoo Element Roam, Wahoo did bring in some new top-line navigational features that really put it in line with other flagship computers from the likes of Garmin and other companies. So, for starters, it can now do turn-by-turn -turn directions, including from Strava, which it couldn't previously do. Um, it can do live tracking, so you can give somebody a link to show you where you are at all times. It can route you back to the start of your course if you get lost or you just want to turn around and go home, it can take you back. Um, it can put you back on track, so if you come off a course, it can route you back to where you need to be. And it also has get me started, which is if your course is further away from you or you're not quite at the start point, it can actually route you on the device to that area. It can also do on-device routing in general, so if you select an area, it can pull together a route for you. Um, I had a bit of trouble making this work, but I just needed to update the base map of the computer, and then I was able to navigate on the device rather than having to have pre-created one on Strava, Komoot, or Ride with GPS. So Wahoo claims that the Wahoo Element Roam has 17 plus hours of battery life, which is a big old chunk. So I'm yet to reach the limit of the device in any single day's riding. And when I completed a 140 kilometer ride with this device, and I was out for most of the day and had a power meter attached and a heart rate sensor attached, I only used 40% of this device's battery life and still had 60 left to play with. So it will last you a long time and you do get a decent amount of whack out of it, which is again, really important for the Wahoo Element Roam. As the name suggests, this is a device which is built to let you explore and ride long distances and places you might not usually go. So battery life is particularly important as is GPS accuracy. 
and it is accurate, the GPS has been accurate so far for all of my riding, but unlike with Garmin, you can't select different GPSs. So you can't select GPS, which is the American one, or GLONASS, which is a Russian satellite, or Galileo, which is a European one. You can only use what is built in to the computer, and I'm not actually 100% sure which satellite it uses, or whether it even hops around between them depending on its location, which it might well do. The point being is that there isn't really a way to find that out with the Wahoo, whereas that's all quite open with the Garmin and you can choose it yourself. So in summary, the Wahoo Element Rome and Wahoo in general is a market leader when it comes to setup. It could not be better, it's incredibly slick and living with this device has been very, very easy and an actual a pleasure to use. I do think it could be improved in its design, it's a little bit clunky compared to the new top end and flagship models from other cycling computer brands including Garmin, but get past that and get past the very slight increase in weight which you don't really notice that much on the front of your bike anyway and you've just got a great user-friendly device that is a joy to use. So for just under £300 those are my thoughts on the Wahoo Element Roam. If you have any questions about this device then please do let me know in the comments section below or if you have any computers you'd like to see as review then do also let us know down there. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Cycling Weekly YouTube channel and we'll see you next time. How do I usually start a review? Um, so this being Wahoo's new flagship def with this being ugh. With this being, oh dear, what a meltdown.